Here are five reasons why good logo design is so important to a startup or SME. Number one, company fit. What is company fit? Well, company fit to me means how well the logo leverages psychology and decades of pre-established visual nuance to accurately and subconsciously trigger a desired emotion or connection in your viewer's mind. For example, let's take a look at this logo. If you're selling heavy metal music, this would be fantastic, but for a medical company, uh, not so much. There are many reasons for this, but the basic explanation is that our brains have evolved to very quickly and subconsciously process and categorise visual stimulus and automatically shut out irrelevant information. Have you ever suddenly heard your name in a conversation you didn't realise you were listening to? This same thing happens visually. Have you ever suddenly realised a product can solve a problem you have, even though you've seen it multiple times? This can be a result of the visual presentation failing to indicate to you that it belongs to a certain category, and therefore you have subconsciously ruled it out as a possible solution. This is why company fit is so important, and even more so for startups and new businesses. This is because company fit isn't just about receiving the many benefits of evoking the correct emotional response, but avoiding the very real risk of invoking incorrect ones, causing your customers to subconsciously rule out your product, even if they are actively looking for it. This is far more likely to happen to start up in new businesses, as they have not had the luxury of repeat exposure. This leads me to reason number two, building value and recognition into your visual identity from the very beginning. Every time you spend money on marketing, you're also investing in building the desired emotional response to your logo in your customer. For example, popular sports brands may sponsor sports celebrities so that repeated exposure to that logo creates a mental shortcut in your brain that correlates that shape to the feelings you have associated with a particular sports person. This means that whenever you see this logo in the future, your brain will use this mental shortcut it's created to give you the feeling of accomplishment when viewing that logo. And the more exposure to the logo, the stronger this effect. So it's well worth investing in a solid foundation from the beginning so that you can start to build these connections in the viewer's mind. On the flip side of this, it works the other way. If your logo is initially miscategorized in the mind of your customer, repeated exposure can serve to exacerbate this problem. You don't want to be solidifying the incorrect connections in the customer's mind, because these can be very difficult to undo at a later date. Number three, time and money. If you start with a bad logo, as you scale the business, you will inevitably need to rebrand. This means you lose the benefits in reason two, but you also end up paying for the logo two or three times before you get it right, far outweighing the initial cost of just doing it right the first time. You may even have somebody on staff that offers to redesign the logo for you. This can lead to a multitude of problems, as internal designers might not have the proper authority to advocate for design decisions on more than just a visual level, especially when pitching to higher management. For example, let's say two out of 10 people in the company don't like a particular color pitched by the designer. The agency will be able to advocate for this color based on industry research and a wealth of similar clients and may be able to convince the remaining two parties that this is the correct decision even if they don't like the color on a personal level. However, if the same decision had to be made with an internal designer, you may be more likely to ask for multiple variations to satisfy the curiosity of the two parties that dislike the colour on a personal basis, and the designer may not be in a position to advocate for the business implications. This can lead to a lot of internal tension and a lot of wasted time and resources. This isn't even the only way that a bad logo can cost you a lot of money. Depending on your business, you may need to retool machinery, find and track down thousands of instances of old branding online or in print, and there is always the risk that thousands of dollars may have been spent on merchandise or products that people don't want simply because of substandard design work. Number four, company culture. Your logo is the flag that your team and customers rally behind. It's the visual representation of everything you do and everyone who supports you. Therefore, a bad logo can damage company culture. No one wants to rally behind an ugly flag. And I'm sure you've experienced that our logo is horrible mentality in some companies where the employees don't like wearing company branded clothing, don't like the look of their business cards, etc. This can have real world effects on company culture where the logo serves to divide rather than to unite. Number five, technical issues and cross-functional tension. 
A poor logo can cause a number of technical issues. For example, if the logo is too detailed, it may look good at large scales, but completely illegible at smaller sizes. This can compound from just a technical issue to cross-functional tension. So, using the example of a website navigation bar and a poorly designed logo, the web development or software team may want to hide the logo or make it as unintrusive as possible as not to ruin the overall design of the website. And rightly so. However, the marketing team argue that the logo needs to be much bigger to receive the benefits of repeat exposure and brand recognition. Again, a totally valid point. Both sides will fight for their position as both parties are correct in this situation. And these problems will continue across other marketing and design assets such as business cards, promotional material and so on, causing further tension. And these problems will never truly be solved until the logo is properly designed to allow for such scaling as to make both parties satisfied. So, what's the conclusion? Should every startup a new business go and spend a bunch of money on a logo? Well, it, it kind of depends on the company. If you're a startup and you've got limited resources, I'd definitely advocate for spending every penny you've got and improving your product and your service. However, if you plan to scale, investing in good design early can save you a lot of headaches and a lot of time later down the line. And I believe it's a huge risk to invest in anything your logo touches until it's correct. So before spending money on marketing, merchandise, web design or anything of that nature, I think you should get your logo right first.